Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to do a procedure that is very common on the Behringer amplifiers called the fan mod. I started by ordering a Noctua NF-A8 PWM 80mm quiet fan from Amazon. I'll leave a link to the description below to it. I chose this fan because it seemed to be a very popular choice when performing this mod. Inside the box is the 80mm fan itself, some rubber vibration isolators, mounting hardware, and several different wiring harnesses for various installation applications. The wire harness that comes attached to the fan itself is a 4-pin harness. And we're going to come back to this in a little bit in the video. And just for reference, here are the three different wiring harnesses that came with the fan inside of the box. I won't be using any of these for this modification, but they come with the fan if you need it for a different application. Before we make any modifications, let's take some measurements so we can compare the before and after. I will be using my U-Mic 1 that is attached to my PC with a USB extension cable over to the AV rack. I will be using the SPL meter that is built into REW to take these sound measurements. The mic is centered in between the two front exhaust vents of the Behringer amp, and for this first measurement, it's right at 12 inches or one foot away from the front of the amp. With the amp off, this is the initial reading at 12 inches away, roughly between 48 and 49 decibels. After the amp initially got turned on, it looks like the SPL meter settled between 55 and 56 decibels with the amp on and the factory fan running. I was personally surprised because it sounds a lot louder than that in person, but it only measured about 7 to 8 decibels louder. Now let's try the same thing from 6 inches away. Pretty much the same 55 to 56 decibels from 6 inches away. Now let's add a visual indicator for comparison. Okay, let's get to work. Here are the tools I used for this project. There are multiple ways to splice wires together. I chose to solder them. First, we need to remove the amplifier from the AV rack. I was gonna use tape to identify which outputs and inputs were the right channel, but it worked just to lay them on opposite sides of the AV rack to indicate which ones were left and which ones were right. Just make sure that you get them hooked back up in the correct inputs and outputs when you're all done at the end. And of course, it's always a good idea to disconnect the power by unplugging it before you start unplugging your inputs and outputs, and then vice versa at the end, plug in power last after you've got your inputs and outputs reconnected. Now it's time to take off the top panel by using a smaller Phillips screwdriver. Remove the six screws that hold the top panel in place. Then remove the top panel to expose the fan connection and the fan location. Now we remove the stock fan by removing the four Phillips screws on the back of the amplifier. There's a metal grate that will come off and then the fan will be removed from the inside of the amp after we get the wiring connector unplugged. 
you will find a plaque shroud that is somewhat attached to the stock fan with some sticky glue that can be removed by pulling on it gently. This will allow you to see the two-pin fan connector that plugs into the board more easily. I ended up using a small flathead screwdriver to pry on the connector to get it to release so that I could unplug it from the board and remove the entire stock fan assembly. This is the stock fan completely removed from the board. And here are the two fans side by side, both 80 millimeters. With the biggest difference being one is a two pin connector and the new fan has a four pin connector. I decided to pull the wiring connectors out of the four pin connector of the new fan by pushing on the bottom of the connector to release the metal tab and pulling it out of the back of the connector as you can see here in the video. In hindsight, I probably could have just cut the wires off and stripped them back a bit, but I was curious if the metal end would work inside of the two pin stock connector. Unfortunately, it doesn't work as it is a different style of connector. Now I'm cutting off the stock fan connector, giving myself plenty of wire to work with for soldering to the new fan. The stock connector only has a red and black wire, which are positive and negative. All we have to do is find our positive and negative wires from the wiring of the new fan, which are yellow for positive and black for negative. So we simply connect red to yellow and black to black, and we are in business. I prepped the wires for soldering. Unfortunately, I realized I was out of heat shrink connectors at this point, but I went ahead anyways. Heat shrink connectors are great because after your soldering is done, you slide the connector down over your solder joint, heat it up, and it creates a waterproof or complete seal over your connection. I ended up having to use electrical tape since I was out of those connectors. The new fan is ready to be installed. In case you forget which way the fan is supposed to be mounted, this particular fan has arrows that show the airflow direction. It doesn't show up on the camera very well, but if you look closely, you might be able to see the arrows so that you mount the fan in the right direction. When I initially researched this modification, I saw different ways people did this next part. I saw some people get rid of this plastic shroud, that the original fan came with. I also saw aftermarket heat sinks installed on the long silver part on the board itself to additionally aid in cooling. I didn't do anything other than replace the fan and then I put everything back together the way it was from the factory. We'll see what happens in the long run, I guess. Before I reinstall the top panel, I decided to do a quick test to make sure the fan works. My power cable to the amp is securely attached with multiple Velcro ties to the AV rack, so I had to put the amp back in place to get it close enough to the power cord in order to test the fan out. And a moment of truth, turn on the power to the amp and it works. Now we can install our top cover. And then we can reinstall the amplifier back into the rack, making sure we get the correct inputs and outputs hooked up into the proper left and right channels as it was before we removed it. Now for the results of the modification. Here we are at 48 to 49 decibels with the amplifier off. We're going to take our first measurement at 12 inches away and in the center of the front panel like we did before. I'm going to turn on the live audio from the recording as well so you can hear the difference when the amp is powered on.
As you can hear, there is absolutely no sound difference at all when the amp is turned on now. In fact, it is so quiet you don't even know the amp is on unless you see the red power button on the front display. Since I've done this mod, it's actually been hard to remember to turn the amp off now. At 6 inches away, there was still no difference in sound, and it is whisper quiet. You can tell the fan is working because you are seeing the airflow out of the front vents. It does look like there is less airflow as the paper indicators aren't moving as much as they did with the stock fan. I have watched several full length movies and haven't had any issues so far. I wish I had a temperature gun to truly see the difference in how effective this new fan works compared to the stock fan. But I'll take the quieter version any day, and only time will tell if I run into any problems with this amp overheating or shutting down or failing, which I will update in a future video if that does happen. And that's all for this video. Links to the products are in the description below. Please comment if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks again for watching as always, and please consider subscribing if you like this video and want to see more like it in the future. We'll see you next time.